Good morning, everybody. I uh, want to take some time to give you a quick update about the situation in Iraq. Yesterday, I convened a meeting with my National Security Council to discuss the situation there, and uh, this morning I received an update from my team. Over the last several days, we've seen significant gains made by ISIL, a terrorist organization that operates in both Iraq and in Syria. In the face of a terrorist offensive, Iraqi security forces have proven unable to defend a number of cities, which has allowed the terrorists to overrun a part of Iraq's territory. And this poses a danger to Iraq and its people. And given the nature of these terrorists, it could pose a threat uh, eventually to American interests as well. Now, this threat uh, is not brand new. Uh, over the last year, we've been steadily ramping up our security assistance to the Iraqi government with increased training, equipping, and intelligence. Now, Iraq needs additional support to break the momentum of extremist groups and bolster the capabilities of Iraqi security forces. We will not be sending U.S. troops back into combat in Iraq, but I have asked my national security team to prepare a range of other options that could help support Iraq security forces, and I'll be reviewing those options in the days ahead. I do want to be clear, though. This is not solely or even primarily a military challenge. Over the past decade, American troops have made extraordinary sacrifices to give Iraqis an opportunity to claim their own future. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Iraqis' leaders have been unable to overcome too often uh, the mistrust and sectarian differences uh, that have long been uh, simmering there. And that's created vulnerabilities within the Iraqi government as well as their security forces. So uh, any action that we may take to provide assistance to Iraqi security forces has to be joined by a serious and sincere effort by Iraq's leaders to set aside sectarian differences, to promote stability, and account for the legitimate interests of all of Iraq's communities, and to continue to build the capacity of an effective security force. Uh, we can't do it for them. And in the absence of this type of political effort, short-term military action, uh, including any assistance we might provide, won't succeed. So this should be a wake-up call. Iraq's leaders have to demonstrate a willingness to make hard decisions and compromises on behalf of the Iraqi people in order to bring the country together. In that effort, they will have the support of the United States and our friends and our allies. Now, Iraq's neighbors ha also have some responsibilities to support this process. Nobody has an interest in seeing terrorists gain a foothold inside of Iraq, and nobody is going to benefit from seeing Iraq descend into chaos. So the United States will do our part, but understand that ultimately it's up to the Iraqis as a sovereign nation to solve their problems. Uh, indeed, across the region, we have redoubled our efforts to help build more capable counterterrorism forces so that groups like ISIL can't establish safe haven. And we'll continue that effort through our support of the moderate opposition in Syria, our support for Iraq and its security forces, and our partnership with other countries across the region. Uh, we're also going to pursue intensive diplomacy uh, throughout this period, both inside of Iraq and across the region, uh, because there's never going to be stability in Iraq or the broader region unless there are political outcomes that allow people to resolve their differences peacefully without resorting to war or relying on the United States military. Uh, we'll be monitoring the situation in Iraq very carefully over the next several days. Uh, our top priority will remain being vigilant against any threats to our personnel serving overseas. Uh, we will consult closely with Congress as we make determinations about appropriate action, and we'll continue to keep the American people fully informed as we make decisions about the way forward. All right. I'll take a question. In recent U.S. history there, are you reluctant to get involved again in Iraq? Uh, I think that uh, we should uh, you know, look at the situation carefully. We have an interest in making sure that uh, a group like ISIL, which is a, a vicious organization and has uh, been ta able to take advantage of the chaos in Syria, that they don't get a, a broader foothold. Uh, I think there are dangers uh, of uh, fierce sectarian fighting if, for example, the terrorist organizations try to overrun uh, sacred Shia sites, uh, which could trigger Shia-Sunni conflicts uh, that could be very hard to stamp out. Uh, so we have 
uh, enormous interest there, and obviously uh, our troops uh, and the American people and the American taxpayers made huge investments and sacrifices uh, in order to give Iraqis the opportunity uh, to chart a better course, a better destiny. But ultimately, they're going to have to seize it. Uh, as I said before, we are not going to be able to do it for them. Uh, and you know, given uh, the very difficult history that we've seen in Iraq, uh, I think that any objective observer would recognize that uh, in the absence of accommodation among the various factions inside of Iraq, uh, various military actions uh, by the United States, by any outside uh, nation, uh, are not going to solve those problems over the long term and not going to deliver the kind of stability that we need. Anybody else? Mr. President, is the Syrian civil war spilling over the Iraq border? And well, I think, I, think that's, I, I think that's been happening for some time. Uh, ISIL has been able to gain a foothold in Syria. That's part of the reason why we've been so concerned about it. Uh, that's part of the reason why we've been supporting uh, the Syrian opposition there. Um, but it's a challenging problem. In Iraq, uh, the Iraqi government, which was initially resistant to some of our offers of help, uh, has come around now to recognize that uh, uh, cooperation with us on some of these issues can be useful. Obviously, that's not the case in Syria, where uh, uh, President Assad uh, has no interest in uh, seeing us involved there, and where uh, some of the governments that are supporting Assad uh, have been able to block, for example, uh, UN efforts even at humanitarian aid. Uh, but this is a regional problem, and it is going to be a long-term problem. Uh, and what we're going to have to do is combine uh, selective actions by our military to make sure that we're going after terrorists who could uh, harm our personnel overseas or eventually hit the homeland. We're going to have to combine that with what is a uh, very challenging international effort uh, to try to uh, rebuild countries and communities that uh, have been shattered by a sectarian war. Uh, and that's not an easy task. Well, we're in, we're in contact with them now. So we'll have a better sense uh, by the end of the weekend uh, after those consultations. Uh, and we will be uh, getting a better sense from them of uh, how they might support an effort uh, to, to bring uh, bring about the kind of political unity inside of Iraq that bolsters security forces. Look, uh, the United States has poured a lot of money into these Iraqi security forces, and we devoted a lot of training to Iraqi security forces. Uh, the fact that they are not willing to stand and fight and defend their posts uh, against uh, admittedly hardened terrorists, but not uh, terrorists who are uh, overwhelming in numbers. Uh, indicates that there's a problem with morale, there's a problem in terms of commitment, uh, and uh, ultimately that's rooted in the political problems that have plagued uh, the country uh, for a very long time. Last question. Last one. Thank you. Uh, can you talk a little bit about U.S. concern of the disruption, potential disruption of oil supplies? Well, so far at least, uh, we have not seen major disruptions uh, in oil supplies. Obviously, if, in fact, ISIL uh, was able to obtain control over uh, major output, significant refineries, uh, that could be a source of concern. Um, as you might expect, world oil markets react to any kind of instability in the Middle East. Uh, you know, one of our goals should be to make sure that in cooperation with other countries in the region, uh, not only are we uh, creating some sort of backstop in terms of what's happening inside of Iraq, but if there do end up being disruptions inside of Iraq, uh, that some of the other producers uh, in the Gulf uh, are able, able to pick up the slack. So that'll be part of the consultations that'll be taking place uh, during the course of this week. Uh, just to give people a sense of, of timing here, uh, uh, you know, although events on the ground in Iraq have been happening very quickly, uh, our ability to plan, uh, whether it's military action or uh, work with the Iraqi government on some of these political issues uh, is going to take several days. So people should not anticipate that uh, th this is something that uh, is going to happen overnight. Uh, we want to make sure that we, uh, we have 
good eyes on the situation there. We want to make sure that uh, we've gathered all the intelligence that's necessary so that if, in fact, uh, I do direct and order uh, any actions there, that uh, they're targeted, they're precise, and they're going to have uh, an effect. And uh, as I uh, indicated before, and I want to make sure that everybody understands this message, uh, the United States is not simply going to involve itself in a military action in the absence of a political plan by the Iraqis uh, that gives us some assurance that they're prepared to work together. Uh, we're not going to uh, uh, allow ourselves to be dragged back into a situation uh, in which, uh, while we're there, we're keeping a lid on things. and. Uh, after enormous sacrifices by us, uh, as soon as uh, we're not there, uh, suddenly people end up acting in ways that uh, are not conducive to the long-term stability and prosperity of the, of the country. All right? Thank you very much, everybody.